Hi, this is Steve Barton for Solid Rock Machine Shop Incorporated. Today we're going to talk about surface grinding using a diamond wheel. If you've been following our series, we are working on these two room uh, bench stones. We're going to grind uh, them with the diamond wheel. Uh, we're going to get all the individual uh, pieces of grit so that they're all on the same plane. The benefits of that uh, you can find on Robin Rinsetti's video. He's done an excellent video on it. Uh, here he's going to be making part two. Uh, we look forward to it. In our last video we put a link in the comment section and we'll do it as well on this video and tomorrow's video. Uh, if you want to know what these stones are used for and you really want to see an expert explain what's going on and, and actually making a set, you want to see Robin and his video. Uh, tomorrow, Jonathan's planning on coming out and grinding a set. We made this special clamping unit uh, because these uh, uh, stones are not magnetic. We needed a way to get them to clamp on the magnet and so we just took a regular two dollar door hinge and we made this little contraption. It worked real nice. I have these ones pretty much roughed in. I've already been using it. But uh, some of the struggles we had was with our diamond wheel and getting those trued and dressed out proper and anybody that's worked with diamond wheels uh, on a surface grinder you know that it can be uh, a little bit of a challenge. I have a friend at my full-time job, Pat Bonvillar. Uh, he has this tool and he let me borrow it and this is a, supposed to be a tool that you can true up the diamond and get it going good. I had trouble with it. I couldn't get it to work and that might be my ignorance on the subject more than the tool. So I had to abandon this but I just want to thank Pat for letting me borrow this and use that and I'll get that back to him next week. And so I had to come up with a plan B. With some of the research that I've done on the internet, uh, they talk about uh, some of these carbide shops. They would just take a, a nice block of uh, coal roll steel and they would use that in order to true up the diamond wheel, but they didn't give all the details, so a lot of this was trial and error. So I first started just trying to surface grind and uh, get this. Uh, but my wheel, when I mounted it, I have a Norton 150 grit diamond wheel, when I mounted it, it fit pretty snug on the hub and uh, it was like two thousandths that it was reading out so I had to get that two thousandths run out first and I know with a diamond wheel that was going to be pretty tough so so anyhow I just started by grinding these uh, the surface right here and I don't know Adam if you can see the chatter as I go back and forth on that uh, this, this right here is my first attempt and that's the wheel hop I'm getting from that being out around and just not good and this was not going to be a good good finish uh, this just was not going to be a good finish for the stones so you got a shot of that Adam? okay let's well, stay right there a minute because after we we got this trued up a little bit we finally was able to get this finish which is a lot better and it's still not as good as I want Adam's going to adjust that so you can see it a little better well diamond is not really supposed to be used on steel and I'm thinking the process of what's happening over here uh, you're kind of wearing the diamond in. Uh, what we did, we'll go over by the surface grinder now. We started out, and like I said, the, the concentricity on the wheel to begin with, it was uh, 2,000 cell. And the way you can check that, I can take uh, my indicator over here, and because this is diamond, you got a carbide tip, well the diamond's going to trump the carbide, so you definitely don't want to be spinning your wheel, otherwise you're going to be putting a flat on there. One of the little tricks that I saw off one of the forums on uh, the internet there was that if you can just use a piece of paper, and then you can come up... Uh, hold that piece of paper in there and then you can spin the wheel 
and we went from uh, two thousandths to probably less than two or three tenths. And so that's how I would check and get the run out. The other problem we had, once we had the run out uh, set where the circumference is on the same center line, now we had to true it up on the bottom surface so that the front edge, the back edge, and in the middle, all of that sitting on the same plane. And that, that was getting a lot trickier. I did not clean the surface grinder up. I just wanted to show that this is a messy process. If you're using these white aluminum oxide sticks in combination with that coal roll, it does get messy. So I, I left it uh, dirty on purpose just so you can see some of the mess. But what happened with this wheel as I was truing this up in this direction, uh, I got the back probably eighth inch and the front eighth inch. I got those where they're pretty much on the same plane and they're pretty much around and it's low in the middle. And I'm going to see if I can demonstrate that again to show you what I was getting. Uh, by putting this plate back up here and showing you the process that I used. And so we'll get started here. Let me get set up and we'll be back in just a second. Well, I got the surface grinder set up now and I just lightly touched on here and I wanted to show how this is uh, grinding. Uh, a little bit lower on the two ends and in the middle uh, it, it's not on the same surface so I took a marker inked this up and you can see that we got a little strip here that's grinding a little strip there in the middle it's it's high yet and but this was close enough that I can get our, our, our blocks roughed in I'm going to try to get a little bit better but I wanted to demonstrate this in a video so what I'm going to do now I'm going to go ahead and turn the coolant on and I'm just going to come across here and give a finish on there. Uh, and before I do that, I'm going to take a white stick and I'm going to clean the wheel out real good because what I want to do is uh, show uh, how you can use this method to find out what's high. Uh, we're going to mute the sound for this next part because this coolant pump is quite loud. Well, I had to take a little bit off of this block in order to get uh, the high points loaded up so that you can see the high points. But you can see we're, we're not quite an eighth inch on the front and in the back and the uh, wheel is low in the middle. And so what we're going to attempt to do right now, we're going to try to smooth that out and try to get it level all the way across. And as I mentioned, we've been using these aluminum oxide wheels. Uh, this material is a, a hardness which is very soft, uh, but what happens when you use an aluminum oxide wheel with that resin, this does not cut the diamond. What it does, it cuts the resin. And if you get these high points and you start using the, this aluminum oxide and pushing in on the high point, you can cut away the resin and then the diamond particles will start falling out. And so you can roughly I get this evened out with these aluminum oxide sticks. Uh, the wheel is 150 grit. This is 150 grit. I used it for getting it roughed in. And I use that because I have a lot of those. I only have a couple of these at 220 grit. But generally you want to use a smaller grit uh, than uh, what your wheel is. And the other point that you want to keep in mind is if your wheel is really bad, really far out, what will happen with this aluminum oxide stick, uh, it will be very aggressive if it's dry. If you want it to be gentle, like the case that we are, where it's not near as aggressive, we're going we're gonna to soak this in coolant a little bit before we use it.
and then you're going to want to run coolant on it. And so what I'm going to do now, and you can see I've been working on it uh, earlier, I'm going to hit just the sides that are high, and I'm going to uh, with this, and I'm not. I'm going to try to stay away from the middle because I don't want to take anything out of the middle. It's low. I just want to get the two ends. So we're going to get this started, and we're going to mute the sound again for the coolant tank. What we'll do is we'll try to load the wheel up again and see if we made any progress. Okay, if Adam can get a close up over here, uh, this is another way where we can tell where we're at. I, I cleaned this up, we're actually getting a nicer finish, but then I just inked it up and then I ran with a blank pass and you can still see that we're high. Uh, or that we got a low spot in the middle. And I want to see just how low that is. I want to wind down about a tenth over here and we'll see what that looks like. So that's a difference of two tenths. There's three tenths. And there's four tenths, and we're just about touching. So we're about four tenths uh, on the side is about what we have. So we'll dress it out a little bit more. We're gaining on it. We'll see what it looks like in a few more minutes. Well, we'll see how much we got off this last try. We just marked the plate again. And we haven't wound down any in the Z. We'll just see what it looks like from here. Ah, now it looks like we're kind of high in the middle, so I went a little bit too much, but it's got to be close. Here's one tenth. And you can see that one tenth, we're just a little high in the middle. That's the difference one tenth is making. Uh, Taking a nice slow fat, a pass. That surface is really good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the middle just a little bit now and we'll see what happens. Well, I think this will probably be the, the last pass I do. I think everything's flat on uh, that wheel within one tenth. I'm at the same surface that I cleaned up over here. I got my ink spot. Let's see uh, how much it looks like we got cleaned up in there. And if you look at that, we got just a little bit on that back end. And if I'm going to have it on any place, I want it on the back end. But we're actually taking the ink up. Uh, from there, so let's wind down one tenth. And that's pretty darn close right there. We got the middle section uh, all the way up to the very back. It looks like it's cutting pretty good. That's probably about the best I'm going to get with this method. Uh, I think if I get closer than that, I'm going to have to get a brake tool, which I've used in combination with these stones on bad wheels and threw them up quite fast. But not having one of those has actually worked pretty good. Uh, the finish that I have on there, uh, it feels a lot smoother. The best finish we had so far, so the wheel is definitely getting better. You can see I have a notch in here. This notch is how I actually ended up getting this wheel uh, so I actually got the wheel around the circumference I got it uh, running true that way and uh, what I would do is uh, originally started I was 2000 out and when I would grind in the load that I would get I'll let this stop spinning a second here
the load that I would get on the wheel would be about from here to here and then this would be loaded up and the rest of the wheel wasn't even touching. I was just trying to come down uh, about a half thousand at a time and coming across uh, and that just wasn't taking it off very fast. That was taking a long time. So I decided to try just winding the wheel down a couple hundred thousands and just pull in there. Now the thing you have to do, this is an aluminum hub and it's a resin diamond. You have to keep it flooded with coolant because if you don't keep it flooded with coolant and this heats up, that aluminum is going to expand and it's going to crack all in the resin of diamonds. So you got to take it very easy. Uh, you got to be gentle with it. But just by coming in like that, on the first try I went, uh, I went from uh, this area cleaning up to having over half of it cleaning up. And after a few more tries, I got it where it was clean up all the way around and throwing the indicator underneath it. It went from uh, two thousandths out uh, to being uh, within a few tenths. So anyway, this is probably a poor man's way of getting things done. If you're in a pinch and you need to true up a diamond wheel, you don't have the right tools, this actually works pretty good. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we plan on having Jonathan out. and When he comes in, we'll, we'll work on those blocks. He's going to be making a set of those uh, bench stone. And uh, hopefully the diamond will be ready and we'll be good to go. And as you can see, this method, when you're grinding and you're using these weight sticks, it is a messy process. And so uh, I'll, I'll try to have this all nice and clean so Jonathan won't have a dirty machine to come to and work on. And, and we'll see you tomorrow.